Hey everyone, welcome back to the daily MCAT question of the day. Um, I'm Prerak, and today's question is organic chemistry related. So let's get into it. It says a student is running an experiment of thin layer chromatography. However, the student forgets to cover the experiment with a lid, and the solvent evaporates off the TLC plate. How will this affect the RF values of each of the compounds spotted on the plate? Will the RF values be higher? In, in other words, in, will the RF values on this evaporated plate be higher than they originally were? In the unevaporated plate, will they be lower? Will they be uh, unchanged or can we not determine it? So the key word here is thin layer chromatography. It's an important concept in organic chemistry, but it's also a important concept in general for you to know because it's involved in the separation of compounds. All right. Um, the other thing is this is an organic chemistry concept. So we didn't have a chance to explore organic chemistry as much recently. So that's another reason why I put this question in. So what is thin layer chromatography? Well, before we even talk about thin layer chromatography, I want you to recognize that thin layer chromatography is a type of chromatography. Chromatography in general is a technique used for the separation of compounds. Okay, um, and when I say separation of compounds, it can be involved in a mul like you can separate compounds in a wide variety of ways, and that's why there's a lot of different types of chromatography. In our case, thin layer chromatography is referring to the fact that we have this kind of like paper which is a thin layer of paper, so it's a thin layer chromatography, and that paper is usually made out of silica gel. The silica gel is the stationary phase in this case. What do I mean by stationary phase? Well, the stationary phase in chromatography is the one that doesn't move. So in this case, the paper is going to stay the same, the silica gel is going to stay in one place and pretty much not move. And in this case, the other thing you should know about silica gel is that silica gel is a polar substance. Okay, It's very, very, very polar. Um, and that basically means that it can hydrogen bond and it's not exactly, it's attracted to things that are also polar. On the other hand, at the bottom of this thin layer chroma, uh, of this thin layer sheet in this glass, you'll see, this is a glass by the way, there's a solvent at the bottom. The solvent is the mobile phase because when you put solvent at the bottom, you might have noticed this, when you get a piece of paper wet, the water slowly moves up the piece of paper and it moves up by this thing called capillary action. Okay, so in this case, we have a solvent at the bottom of our cup that will move up by capillary action, as this image di dictates. You'll see this in the second image. You cover up the glass, and the solvent then moves up the plate. And as it moves up, you there are usually compounds that are spotted on the line. So I'm going to try to draw them. And those spotted compounds will also move up. And as they move up, they'll separate because some things will be attracted to the stationary phase, which is the silica gel, and other things will be less attracted to it. And at the end of the experiment, you should end up with a silica plate that kind of works like this, where all the dots are spread out. And you can kind of analyze different substances. So with that being said, what is the RF value? Because remember, if we go back to our first page, the question was actually asking us about the RF values of the compounds on thin layer chromatography. So now that we know what thin layer chromatography is, let's talk a bit about RF values. What is the RF value? Well, if you don't already know, um, the RF value is the distance of the spot on the TLC plate. So remember that when we separate things on a TLC plate, You'll, they'll often migrate differently based on how strongly attracted they are to the stationary phase, right? In this case, we have you know a blue dot and we have a red dot, and the red dot is clearly more attracted to the stationary phase, aka to the polar silica gel, than the blue dot. Okay, so it's the distance. So if you took a ruler and you measured how far the blue dot went, you'd measure 16 millimeters, and in this case, the red dot went five millimeters, right? But the other thing is the RF is the distance of the spot on the TLC plate over the distance of the solvent front. What is the solvent front? The solvent front is the distance the solvent migrates upwards. So you'll notice that, remember, in this previous picture, you saw that the solvent in, in picture number one that I'm kind of showing you right now, the solvent starts at the bottom. And in picture number four, or, or three, I should say, in picture number three, which I'm going to arrow right now, uh, the solvent gets all the way to the top. So the solvent front is always like the front of the solvent, you know, <laughs> intuitive. Scientists are nice. Their, their naming conventions make sense. So the distance of the solvent front. So in this case, notice that the solvent has migrated 20 millimeters, um, and the red dot has migrated 5, and the blue dot has migrated 16. So if we wanted to know the RF value of the blue dot, you'd say the distance the spot migrated, which in this case of the blue dot was 16 millimeters over the distance the uh, solvent migrated, which was 20 millimeters, right? So in this case, the RF value would actually be 0.8 because that simplifies to 4 over 5. On the other hand, the RF value of the blue, of the red dot is 5 millimeters over 20 millimeters, okay? And that simplifies to 0.25. 
At least I think it does, right? So the point is the RF values are pretty much dictated by the solving front and the distance of migration. So now, now I want to ask you to hype, hype, give you a hypothetical scenario, as this question does. Because remember, in the initial experiment, let's say the solvent went 20 millimeters, right? But this question says some of the solvent evaporates. So I asked you in this question, some of the solvent evaporates. Then I wanted you to pretty much know that if the solvent evaporated, let's say this was initially where the solvent was. So, you know, this arrow, these arrows are pointing to where the solvent initially was. Well, if the solvent evaporated, you might think that the solvent line would move down, right? The line would be lower because if the solvent evaporated, you would pretty much see the solvent moving down because the solvent would evaporate off the plate because the top evaporates first because it's closest to the atmosphere. So the solvent line would be the would move down. So here is the evaporated solvent line, right? Because now some of the solvent at the top evaporated off, and now we have an evaporated solvent line. So now what's the new RF value? We already talked about the RF values before, right? 16 over 20 and 5 over 20. They're shown on the left half, uh, left lower half. But what about this new evaporated solvent line? Well, with this new evaporated solvent line, maybe the new distance the solvent front moves is now only 18 millimeters. Right? If it's only 18 millimeters, then now if we do our new RF values, the RF value of blue will be 16 over 18, and the RF value of red will be 5 over 18. Right? The point is, you will now get, let's compare them. Compared to the previous ones, the RF values of both the red and the blue are now much higher because the solvent evaporated and the solvent front distance decreased. Okay? So let me give you. Again, look, I showed you already what happened. This is exactly what I drew on the previous page. And in this case, remember the new solvent front line was only 18 millimeters away because some of it evaporated. And if some of it evaporated, the RF values of the red and the blue will change because the solvent front migrated down. And so the new RF values for both compounds is now higher than it was before because the RF value, you know, before it was 16 over 20 and now it's 16 over 18, which if you do your math, is much higher than 16 over 20. And if you do 5 over 18 to, compared to 5 over 20, 5 over 18 is higher. So with that being said, the RF values of both of the spotted compounds are clearly higher, and pretty much the RF value of any spotted compound will be higher in this experiment if the solvent front migrates down, simply because that's how RF value is defined. All right, so the answer here is actually A, the RF values will be higher than they originally were. Uh, and I hope I explained that to you properly. Please like, subscribe, comment, and let me know if you enjoyed this question, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it, because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.